when people speak of traditional knowledge, environmental knowledge, they mean acute insights about your connection with the land, often with an emphasis on survival. That's the force, the wisdom, that can be applied in conjunction with traditional Western science to achieve what needs to be done, in my opinion, today. My name is Migizu Okwe Dishnikos, Venetian do them, Minoa, Equinishing, Mede Ganing, the Debendagos, or Nuijue. We have a philosophy in our um, culture which talks about water. Um, one of the uh, sacred elements is water. The water was created by the uh, what a great spirit. And because of that, uh, water is very important to us. Water is a living entity. Well, water is um, purification. For us, water comes from the, the laws of the creation when the creation took place. And that's why we really, really, really are um, in tune with that water because water is life. We are part of life. I'm Shelley Arnott, and I'm a professor in the Department of Biology at Queen's University. And um, I study lake ecosystems and how they're impacted by um, in environmental change. So as a Western scientist, I think I, I approach water in two different ways. You know, scientifically, I approach it as a, a problem that, you know, needs to be solved. So we know that salt is going into, into lakes, and so you know, it's the challenge of figuring out what impact that has. Um, but I'm, I'm also a person, and so I interact with water in a very different way as a, as a person, as someone who, you know, likes to go out canoeing or, or kayaking and, and likes to spend time swimming in the, in the lakes. And I feel like even though they're connected, there's still two different ways of, of seeing the water. One's a very analytical way and one's more of an emotional way. Kosho, Ginyumi Wendigo, Makwa Ginin de Nuema, Amekto dem, we quem kong minidum ne sing don java, Mampi Nugo Juanang Nikia dida. My mother used to care, uh, have a glass of water and she would leave that on the windowsill. And uh, I often wondered why, you know, she did that. But, you know, growing up, I understood, you know, she prayed for that water prayed for that water and that was her drinking water for the next day. You know, having that sunlight, Michelle Mesquises, you know, um, blessing that water in the morning. And, um, and so that's something that I do today is I um, have a copper, uh, copper cup that I use, fill it up at night and I, you know, I give thanks to that water. And uh, so that's my drinking water today. So that is my relationship to Nibe Miigwech. Our aquatic ecosystems are experiencing a whole bunch of different types of threats. Uh, there's pollutants that are being um, inadvertently put into to lakes and there's a whole bunch of different kinds from road salt to microplastics and the list goes on. The water is, you know, being contaminated by, um, by a lot of people on this earth. 
and we have to you know bring that awareness to the people that you know we have to start doing something you know for the water and not to pollute the water they say that um, whatever you put in the water we're gonna we're gonna endure that later on um, you know so I always watch what I am putting in the water I, I have to watch that I have to watch how much water I use I have to um, um, even pray to the water whenever I can. Even when I have to take a shower, I give thanksgiving to the water. We've been working on uh, road salt for the last few years and trying to understand the impact that that road salt has on lake ecosystems. We've been doing experiments that look at what level of, of um, salinity starts to impact the local food webs. And we've actually found that they're impacted at surprisingly low levels. We, we put on, in Canada, about 7 million tons of road salt to roads every year. And we do it for a really good reason. By putting road salt on, we eliminate ice on roads, which makes them safer. But the problem is that it has detrimental effects on aquatic ecosystems, um, which can then impact those services that lakes are, are providing. So whether it's drinking water or recreation, So the more roads and, and pavement you have, then the more salt that's going into lakes. And, and in cities, the salt that you apply to your driveway, your sidewalk, or road ends up going into those storm sewers through meltwater. And then that goes into, into lakes. And so even if you don't live near a lake, it still can have, um, the salt can still make its way um, through the, that network of, of storm sewers out into the lake. We walk, you know, throughout Turtle Island, throughout North America, to bring that awareness about the water. Water walk is, um, it's people coming together. It's like a water pilgrimage. Um, using the Christianity word, um, but it is really people coming together for a common cause, and the common cause is the water issue. We're coming in to sing, to bless, and to talk to the water. We want the water to be to be well. Uh, the water walk is uh, to make people become aware how important the water is, how precious the water is. Uh, and to look after it in a better way. The water walk is usually started first thing in the morning, sometimes at sunrise. And we, uh, we walk in ceremony with, with the people that come. And when we walk, it's usually the man that carries uh, the staff and then the women carry a copper pail for the water. And so we usually get the water from whichever lake we walk from and we take a little bit of that water and we walk with that in ceremony, in prayer, and we sing songs, as Auntie had said, and uh, we put our good minds and our thoughts to pray for all the water in the world, not just the water we walk around, but for all the water in the world. And we think of many communities that don't have clean drinking water. I think there are, there are a number of things that, that we can do. Um, one thing is to reduce the amount of salt that gets put on pavement. And, and one way we can do that is just by, by shoveling walkways and driveways rather than relying on salt to remove that snow and ice. And so that can have a big impact because it means that less is being applied and less is going into the, into the lakes. And, and I think also just being aware of those connections, being aware that what you do on land has a huge impact to um, what's happening in the lake. 
I think uh, with uh, the water walk, we have um, slowly succeeding to bring awareness of the water issues in many of the First Nations and also in the non-native communities, the cottages. Um, they, uh, people have become more aware and they're, they're supporters and they walk with us. So they know how important the water is. We've walked uh, around these uh, lakes in the Hortha Lakes area for the past 13 years. And so we do that as people, youth, children, and uh, we continue to do that, to share that with the people that live in this territory. So I challenge you, what are you gonna do for the water? <laughs>